I'm Steve for This Week With Cars, and today I have the new all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E. This particular one is the Mach-E 4X version, which is all-wheel drive. And if you're looking for a review where you find out how many heated seats and how many cup holders this car has, this is not the video for you. I don't work for a magazine, and I'm not obligated to tell you any certain things about the Mach-E. Today we're going to go over what I feel is important about the Mustang Mach-E. We're going to take a tour around it. Then I'm going to put it up on my lift and we'll take a look at how this thing works. And I've been driving it around for a couple days now, so I'm going to take you for a drive and tell you what I think is important about the way the Mach-E drives. The Mach-E has a problem. Last week I had the Ford F-150 Lightning, and that's probably going to skew my review of the Mustang Mach-E. Starting with the trunk or the frunk of the Mach-E, all I had to do to open the front trunk on the Lightning was click a button on the key fob. The Mach-E, however, does not have a button to open the front trunk. To open the front trunk, you have to pull this lever not once, but twice. And that's the only way to open it. And once you do open it, you're greeted with a very lackluster trunk. Compared to the size of the trunk in the F-150 Lightning, this is very disappointing. But you're not going to be doing your family's grocery shopping and putting it in the front trunk. The Ford Lightning also had easy to remove panels in order to get to the service items. These small covers on each side are used to service the headlights. I'm on the driver's side of the vehicle and if we look through the vent on this side, the red piece you see right there, that is the normal 12 volt battery. They have it hidden down in there, not easy to access like on the Lightning. You can see the positive and negative symbols here. However, there is no easy way to access it. So if the battery is locked in the trunk, and you didn't hear it, but there's actually an electric mechanism. When I was pulling that lever on the inside, it was actually actuating something electrically up here. So if your 12 volt battery goes dead, how are you going to get in here? Well, on the front of the Mach-E, Ford has included an access panel. Behind this door, is two wires that you can hook up to another car or to a jump pack. I have the owner's manual right here where they have pictured the two wires that you would connect to a jump pack. Then with the vehicle powered up from the jump pack, you can then pull the lever on the inside and open the front trunk to get access to the battery. Well, that just pulls off. I'm glad I didn't break any of the clips. Looks like one was already missing right here. Okay, that's an absolute terrible design. With all of the panels removed here on the driver's side, this is our reservoir for our washer fluid. We have a jump start port right here. Here's our positive and our ground is right here. The location of our 12 volt battery to run the security system, the radio, things like that. Here's the brake reservoir. Something that can't even be seen and checked without pulling that whole panel off. Our coolant reservoir over here. This is not an air cooled electric vehicle. This is water cooled and does have a coolant system. Down there is our service port for the air conditioning a second coolant reservoir. The other thing that we could see on the Ford Lightning was where it was getting its fresh air for the HVAC system. And I do not see where the Mach-E is drawing that in from. Looks like a couple of these clips stayed here when I pulled these panels off. Just give them a quarter turn, they can come off. You can slip them back into the panel before you reinstall it. There's another one there. Here is a look at that again. All of that is hidden except for the reservoir for your washer fluid. Moving back is the door where you plug in the vehicle. In the back of the door has a Ford Mustang logo and it says horsepower. On the Lightning, it showed a picture of a Model T here and I'll get to that later. 
This area is exactly the same as the Ford Lightning was. The circle here lights up and it indicates your charge percent. This is the standard electric vehicle charger, and this does have DC fast charging. If you're using the DC fast charging, you must hit this button here in order to remove your charger connector. Again, this is only on one side of the vehicle. It's more of a problem on the Lightning, but this car is pretty short, so it's less of a problem that it's only on one side. I would like to see this on both sides of the vehicle or be located in the front or rear. Moving back, it's a bit strange to get into the car. Just hit this button. It will automatically pop the door open for you. Grab the handle and open the door. For the rear doors, there is no handle. Just hit the button and it pops the door open for you. To open the rear hatch, there is a small button located underneath the door. Or you can press twice on the key fob and it will open for you. Underneath this mat is a door that you can pick up. Located in here is an air compressor that you can use to reinflate a flat tire. And a spot to carry a plug-in charger that you can use if you happen to need to plug in somewhere where you cannot get to a built-in charger. There is also one 12-volt outlet located over here. The storage space back here is good size. And this is probably going to be the space that you use the most with this vehicle. The front trunk is probably where you'll store stuff that you don't use very often. We can use this button right here to close it. Apparently, I have locked myself out. The keys are located in the cup holder where I normally throw keys when they're sitting in the garage. It has locked and I can't get in. It's a good thing I left the window open, but when I went to reach in, the alarm started going off. It's a good thing I had the window down, otherwise I might have had to go track down the other set of keys for this. The screen in this car isn't as big as some, but it is a good size. On the Lightning, these screens were switched around, but this still makes it very easy to get parked close to the objects around you. Now let's put the all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E up on the lift and find out how it works. Just like the Lightning, this car is completely smooth underneath. This time, however, I don't see any vents for a front radiator. This front shield is made of plastic. The next one back is some kind of fiber material. Looks to be some kind of drain plug located right there. And it also looks like it's wet, so I think the condensation for the air conditioning must be dripping onto this fiber panel. The front suspension looks to be of a pretty beefy aluminum design. Behind the 19 inch wheels is a pretty large brake rotor as well as caliper. That's a very good size caliper. Up front behind the wheel, it looks like a pretty standard front wheel drive setup with the electric motor bolted to the differential. Just behind the front wheels is some more fiber. The entire center of this vehicle is all batteries. I'm not sure what this material on the bottom of the car is. It kind of feels a little bit like plastic, although it could be a powder coated metal, but it's definitely not the steel skid plates that the Lightning had down here. And here in the very back, we're back to that fiber material. The rear suspension makes use of some aluminum and some steel parts. And power is driven to the wheels in a pretty standard axle setup where these joints add another service item. The rotors on the back are pretty decent size for a rear rotor and there is a much smaller caliper back here. On the bottom of the rear suspension, they use another small piece of fiber and it looks like the only thing it's protecting is the bottom of the spring purchase. Looking up through this hole, we can see a gigantic aluminum assembly that's holding the motors and the differential. In the rear, there is two tiny access hatches in the fiber panel, and those give you access to the bolt on the rear suspension. I'm starting out the drive with the default settings. I am in whisper mode. We also have engage and unbridled. Those are just different speeds. It remaps the accelerator pedal and unbridled. The power kicks in much quicker. And it also gives you more regenerative braking. I have one pedal driving on, 
which means I only need to use the throttle pedal. When I let off the throttle pedal, the car will automatically come to a stop and I'm regaining as much of the energy as I possibly can. Right now, I also have propulsion sound turned on and that plays a little sound through the speaker system that emulates a slight engine sound. And it is a lot easier to keep track of how quickly you're going if you hear a sound increasing as your speed increases. So as I come up to this roundabout, I've let off the throttle, I'm not giving it any brake, and it is slowing down for me. I am in whisper mode right now, and this car is still very, very quick. Let off the throttle, it is slowing down decently quickly right now. Let's change it to unbridled now. Okay, the car instantly picked up I didn't change my throttle position and the car sped up as I had changed the mode there. Now when I let off, it does stop a bit quicker. You can hear that propulsion sound right now. Seems like it is louder in the unbridled mode. One thing I didn't realize until I got this car in the lift is just how big those front brakes are. So let's get up a little speed, slam on the brakes and see how well this thing stops. 60 miles an hour. Oh, we just locked up the front tires there. If that was an emergency situation, we would have just pushed right into whatever we were facing. We probably would have had no steering at all. That was not what I expected to happen. Let's turn the propulsion sound off now. Now as I give it throttle, all we're hearing is road noise and a little bit of noise from the electric motors. So in this car, leaving one pedal driving on is your best bet for recovering as much energy as you can. If you can time everything right where you are not using the brake pedal, you know you have gained as much energy as you could. Let's turn one pedal driving off now. So when I let off the throttle now, it just keeps coasting at a constant speed. It looks like it's not going to slow down, at least not very quickly unless I do hit the brake pedal. Now, the regenerative braking does kick in when you push the brake pedal, but you are probably losing a slight amount to using your brakes no matter how much you're touching it. So why would you drive around without one pedal driving? Well, I guess it's just personal preference. If you like your vehicle to coast a little, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to even allow that in this vehicle because you want to be regaining as much energy back into the batteries as you can. The weight is set down real low on this car, so cornering feels very, very secure. There we've got the tires squealing. Very, very planted. Don't have any worry that the car is going to kick out on me. Now that we're on the road, let's set the cruise control. This does have, have lane keeping capabilities, so it is steering all on its own right now. And I assume that there is some kind of sensor in there that is making sure that I am watching the road. Probably has a sensor, yep, there it is to know that whether I have my hands on the wheel at all. Even though it is driving itself right now, they want you to at least keep your hands on the road and be looking at the road. And of so. course, this car does have adaptive cruise control as well, so if your speed is set higher than the cars in front of you, it will automatically slow down and continue at their speed. So all over this car, we can find Mustang logos. And is this a Mustang? I don't think so, and let me demonstrate why. Here under driver assistance, we can find traction control. Let's turn that off. Let's change our drive mode to unbridled. Let's come to a complete stop. Let's hit the throttle. I have traction control off. There was no wheel spin. The car didn't get crazy, wasn't a whole lot of sound. This is not a Mustang. So what is this car? This car is a competitor to the Tesla Model Y. And I think this car is even better than the Tesla. Everything in here feels really well built. You also have a huge dealer network where you can take your car to get serviced should there be any little thing that's wrong with it. I think Ford wanted to build a car to compete with the Tesla but they didn't want it to look silly. They didn't want it to be a 
bad looking car and fail due to its looks alone. So they decided to use the front end and rear end look of the Mustang and of course then had to give it a Mustang name. I think Ford was taking a huge gamble and they wanted to give the car the best head start that they could possibly give as this was their first foray into the market. So the conclusion that I've come to is that this is a great car if you are considering getting a Tesla Model Y. And as I mentioned before, under the charging door of this car shows a Mustang logo, whereas the Lightning shows the Model T logo. And I really do think that Ford was right about the F-150 Lightning being their game-changing vehicle. The Ford Lightning is so much better than this car. The Ford Lightning is really a game changer and that's what I would rather have over the Mach-E. Don't get me wrong, this is a great vehicle, but this is not a Mustang. There's no drama. It gives me no excitement from something that I would want with the Mustang name on it. If I was going to run out and buy a brand new Ford today, it's the Ford F-150 Lightning that would be in my garage. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.